Well, good afternoon, everybody. I uh, thank you for joining uh, Champion Solutions Group and our presentation today of something that we're really excited about uh, to share with you. Um, we have uh, our new solution, eBridge, uh, that we are going to be demonstrating uh, for you today. Uh, and I have some distinguished, some colleagues with me, uh, some esteemed colleagues. And uh, Frank Hansen, are, are you on board? I am. Greetings, everyone. Uh, Frank is the brain child uh, and brain trust uh, behind uh, eBridge and what we're doing for our clients. And also, Drew, are you on as well? I am. Good afternoon. Yes. Well, thank you for joining, Drew. Uh, and Drew is going to be participating and also answering your questions uh, via the, the live chat. Uh, if you have them, he's also going to be chiming in uh, throughout the presentation. So if you do have a, um, some questions, put them up in the chat and Drew will do his best to get to them um, as soon as he can. Um, and we'll be answering those. So let's start off real quick here. Um, wanted to do uh, a poll for everybody, um, just to you know get you know the the feel of what uh, the customers are doing. So the first question I would like to know is if it's possible: is are you using Office 365 uh, today? Um, and I would like to know if you guys could go ahead. Um, and uh, please answer those questions for us. Are you using Office 365 uh, today? Um, so if you could please uh, do that and just let us know how many are. So we're just a couple more seconds here and we are, let's go ahead and call that right about now. And what we're seeing right now, Frank, is we have about 80% of the attendees are using Office 365 today. So thank you uh, for that uh, participation uh, there. I really do uh, appreciate that. Um, the next um, uh, question that um, I would appreciate uh, is, let me just uh, get the next answer here, is the Give me just one second, having a little technical difficulty here. Um, all right, so that's great. And the that was the main question that we really wanted, to see how many people were really using the Office 365 today. So about 80% of you guys are utilizing that. So let's talk a little bit about eBridge. So eBridge, um, you know, really what uh, eBridge is all about is it, what we've done is we've made it really easy right frank i mean at the end of the day we've made it quick and easy and really cost effective to connect all of your it enterprise apps into service now we've really uh done a great job of removing the complexity uh of the integration uh, of your disparate IT uh, applications and really have tried to make this thing a real uh, harmonious IT infrastructure and really leverage uh, your investments into uh, ServiceNow. That's really what eBridge is all about. Um, and if you look into it and we, when we go out and we polled customers and we said, you know, why did you purchase ServiceNow? I mean, you know, why did you purchase it? And it was a pretty consistent, right? It was, well, we did it to help us with our incident and problem management, trying to get to root cause and streamline service restoration. Okay, maybe you guys are nodding your heads and saying, yep, that's one of the reasons. The other one was trying to populate a CMDB um, and hey, keeping the, yes. Chris, sorry to interrupt you, but the poll questions are still up on the screen. Oh, I apologize, <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Um, let me go over ahead and get out of that real quick. Thank you, Frank. I appreciate that. Um, okay. Give me just one second, please. All right, Frank, did I, you see my screen now? There you go. 
Yep. Okay. Sorry about that. It was a little technical difficulty with go to webinar. So the other piece that you know we talked about was people wanted a single source of truth, right? With discovery and and populating that CMDB and trying to get to what the single source of truth is with all the different uh, computer assets they might have. Other reasons customers told us was, hey man, I'm really trying to develop a real good automation through workflows, trying to automate the mundane uh, through orchestration. And then finally, another one was try to reduce the event noise uh, and give business view into various tool sets and doing that through the event management. So really it was the event management, the orchestration, discovery, incident uh, uh, problem uh, management is really what we were seeing from you guys out there who we service uh, with ServiceNow. So that's really what we saw. So what happened though is we started seeing something really similar. We have been doing hundreds and hundreds of ServiceNow implementations. And you know what came back was, you know, we need to build eBridge. And why is because you asked us to, the customer. You really did. What you said was when we asked you the question, we said, are you taking full advantage of ServiceNow? And almost universally, the answer always came back said, no, we do not believe we're getting the full advantage of our investment. The next question that we asked was, let me ask you this, do you have like disparate IT applications that you wish were connected to ServiceNow? I mean, let's face it, ServiceNow is a fantastic solution, but let's also face the fact that you guys on the phone today have invested millions of dollars into other enterprise tools, whether it's patching tools, whether it's security tools, whether it's other discovery tools that are out there in your environment. And when we asked, would you like those to be connected uh, in a bi-directional fashion into ServiceNow, almost everybody said yes. Hmm. So we said, okay, we're listening to our clients. And then you also said to us, you know what? We really believe in the CMDB, but man, oh man, can you develop a maybe a better way to more cost effectively populate our ServiceNow CMDB? Um, maybe you could take some of the information that we're using in Active Directory and, pu and publish that into, into ServiceNow CMDB, or maybe through SolarWinds, I have a bunch there, or SCCM, or Big Fix, or Splunk. Can we take some of that data and start populating the CMDB? And that's what you asked us to do. And then you also said, which was kind of amazing um, as, as the cloud world comes up, is 80% of you are using Office 365, according to our poll. And what we also found out, it was like a lot of you use ServiceNow in your HR workflow to onboard and offboard employees. But what happened though, is when you were trying to do that workflow, if you didn't have an Office 365 license, the workflow would break is what you told us. You would said, okay, well now I got to stop the workflow. I got to go out and purchase the license if I don't own it uh, and then go ahead and assign the license to the appropriate people and the appropriate groups. So, you know, the reality of it was, was, hey, you know, we need to figure out a way to automate the procurement, not just the assignment, but if I don't have the license, I need to go procure it. And I would love to do that in an automated fashion. So really what we did is we've created all of these integrations um, in a bi-directional fashion. Frank, just do me a favor if you don't mind, buddy. Can you sure. go ahead and just talk a little bit about the bi-directional and why that's important uh, on any type of integration? Yeah, so, so traditionally, you know, just doing discovery and bringing data in from other applications, everyone does that. Or, or some people, you know, they attempt to do that. What is important for most customers is to be able to not only you know, bring in that inventory data, but also to perform actions against that other system. So a couple of good examples are, you know, in Microsoft, if you want to, you know, add a new license, right? We can get all the your subscriptions for your tenant, but it'd also be nice if we could actually, you know, sub, go and get some entitlement. For Big Fix, maybe we want to patch something. Um, we need to have that bi-directional interface in order to perform that action. And that's a really strength of what eBridge brings to the table. Right, and then Frank, and the other thing that was really, uh, that came right from our clients, we said, not only do I want a bi-directional communication, but I want to be able to correlate the data that's coming in from Big Fix and correlate it to Curator, SolarWinds, 
and be able to have some correlation between that and then feed that into ServiceNow. Maybe you want to talk a little bit about the correlation. Yeah, so that's another great part of what eBridge does is we bring these data points from, you know, products like SolarWinds and Microsoft and QRadar, we bring them into, Sol into ServiceNow. Once they're in ServiceNow, we can create intelligent relationships of that data. So a, an awesome example is, let's say you, 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 know, you fire someone from your organization. Not an awesome example, but an example anyway. Um, so we fire someone from the organization and we want to track, is their user ID, you know, what is that doing in the environment? With eBridge now and bringing in the data sets from things like, you know, AD on-premise or big fix, we can tell what that user did and if they're performing actions last time they logged in and et cetera. And all that stuff gets rippled up into a, a nice, you know, consumable view that the end user can act upon. Yeah, excellent, excellent. So these are some of the things that we were, you know, that you guys uh, being our clients have asked us for. And so what really that we did is we've created big picks, not big picks, I take that back, um, eBridge with some of these key features, right? First of all, we just spoke about it, right? One, bi-directional communication. It just can't be, oh, okay, Active Directory is sending me an email, you know, and, and you know, telling me in ServiceNow what's transpiring. It needs to be something that can go back and forth. Also, the ability to perform actionable automation Okay, uh, and be able to run updates and patches and things uh, with just a click of a button within ServiceNow. And then we spoke, right, Frank, about how important it was to have correlation amongst the different application connectors. No longer is it good enough just to have, oh, I'm taking information in from, um, you know, Splunk and I'm, I'm collecting it in ServiceNow. Yeah, okay, great, that's fantastic, but wouldn't it be good then to connect right into Big Fix to go apply the patches that Splunk you know, recognized and let's go ahead and do that and let's make sure that all the connections are correlating and, and communicating amongst each other and sending that in a, in a bi-directional communication through the actionable workflow automation of ServiceNow. And then the other thing that really came up, and I know Drew, you and I have spoke about this to many of our clients, is the ability to have the single pane of glass, right? To be able to have all this done through that single pane of glass, which is your investment in service now. So Drew, you call it the swivel chair integration. No longer, you know, is off, you have to go buy a license in Office 365. You got to swing your chair around, go into the Office 365 admin portal, you know, purchase the license and then swing back over now to ServiceNow. And then, oh, by the way, you got to make sure the machine's packed. So now let's swing over to Big Fix uh, or whatever it might be that you're using. Wouldn't it be great if we could do it all within ServiceNow? And that's really the uh, what we've built here and we're so excited to share this with you but real quick so right now what we're going to demonstrate for you today we're really excited about the opportunity here to to present this uh, this use case of a, a complete uh, workflow of onboarding an office 365 person um, but one of the things is is that we've taken uh, a product that we've built um, it's called Inscape and uh, you know Inscape right now has uh, over 2300 clients thank you everybody who's using that and 20 to 30,000 times a month people are utilizing Inscape to do ads so they're hiring new people they knew they need more uh, office 365 seats changes they want to move it from one SKU to another or maybe they're reducing headcount and they need to remove um, so 20 to 30 thousand times a month um, you know Inscape has been doing these transactions of ads changes and removals to and from the Microsoft cloud and so, and again, you, our customers, our 2,300 customers came to us and said, many of you came and said, man, I'm using ServiceNow. Can you please connect these two systems together so I can just automate this whole damn workflow and, and make me more productive? And that's really what we're going to show you to you today. And so what we're really excited about, and I'm, there might be some arguments, uh, but to date, it's the only platform that I have seen that allows you, the user, to procure an Office 365 license, provision and assign the license in Office 365 without ever leaving your ServiceNow console and can be completely uh, automated. So that's what Frank, the main man, Hansen, 
is going to show for you today. Um, Frank or Drew, any more comments on that before I move it over to um, uh, over to Frank for uh, presenter? I don't think so. Nope, I think we're good to go. Okay. Um, all right, Frank. So I'm handing it over to you, um, and you're you should have uh, demo rights right now. I hope. Okay, you should be able to see my screen now. We can. All right, Chris, can you see my screen? I'm getting out of it, but yes, I can. If everybody else can, I will. <laughs> okay. We can. Yep. Thank you. All right, so the screen you're looking at now, the, the folks that are familiar with ServiceNow, this is a, a normal out of the box ITIL homepage from ServiceNow. Um, so we're in the champion vendor instance of ServiceNow. Okay, Frank, so let's just slow down here real quick, just for those maybe who are, you know, who are um, utilizing ServiceNow, where this is our instance, right? This is our instance within Champion. This is our environment. And what you're about to bring up is the Office 365 environment. Is that correct? That's correct. So this is our ServiceNow vendor instance. And then we have a demo instance of Office 365 that we're going to be showing the, the tie-in. Okay, great, great. Um, now, Frank, real quick, can you show that service catalog here, uh, what we have here just to, for everybody? Yeah, so we have about 12 to 13 apps that we've integrated into ServiceNow, and those cover everything from, you know, products like SCCM and Big Fix to vCenter to SolarWinds, um, just to name a few. Right. So all of these are connected. You can connect into any of these, which we'll demonstrate later, without ever leaving your ServiceNow uh, portal. That's correct. And the other important thing there is these are scoped applications that are, are certified in the App Store. So that's an extremely important point for ServiceNow purists out there. Yes, and that why is that important? Because uh, you know ServiceNow has blessed all of these uh, applications. Some of them, I, I think we have six or seven up in the store. The rest of them are in progress of being blessed, but uh, we're 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 on our way there. Okay, so Frank, let's go ahead and jump into that Office 365 provisioning and reporting. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so. Frank, I noticed here a couple things, right? Right off the top, right? We have Office 365 provisioning and reporting. So we're, we're going to talk about the provisioning real quick here. But how many reports do we have presently today that, you know, I think the user audience might find helpful? Yeah, so we have probably over 40 out-of-the-box reports. And when I say out-of-the-box, out-of-the-box for what you get with eBridge. So right. over 40 reports that the user can get without having to do anything. And more and more uh, are we, you know, added. Uh, we listen. We run in two-week sprints. We get a lot of comments from our and and suggestions from our our members, and we appreciate you guys keeping that on. So, Frank, why don't we first start off before getting into all the reports and stuff? Because uh, let, let's let's jump into the, let let's go ahead and provision somebody. Let's go, let's go ahead and just show how that works. And I think the first thing we're going to show here is how to do it manually through ServiceNow, uh, and then we'll go into the automated version. Yeah, so on the provisioning screen here, you'll see that we have the capability of doing subscription offers. We can activate or suspend. We can add additional quantities from subscriptions. We can associate a license to a user. And then finally, we have a whole onboarding process. Excellent, excellent. So let's go ahead and hire you, Frank. Let's do that. Sure, sure. I'm pretty expensive, though. So. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So, so let me walk through a few of the processes that if you had to do it manually, we have the capability you know, built into the solution. So let's just say if we want to order a subscription, for example, this is tied directly into, into Microsoft's offers. So the list of offers that you're seeing here, this comes you know, from Microsoft. And let's say I'm interested in, off, I want to maybe get like a E3 license. So an Office 365 or E1 license, sorry. And what I can do here is I select the offer from my list. I pick a quantity, so let's say I just want one. And then I click Submit. Now, a couple of things happen here. Um, if your user that you're logged into ServiceNow has the appropriate roles, you'll get this UI button to approve the offer request right away. If you don't, in the background, a workflow will be triggered. And then it, you'll, if you're an approver, you get a, a, a or approval request that you have to submit. We're just going to go ahead and say, hey, we're an approver. Let's go ahead and approve this request. Mm -hmm. So, so right, Frank, 
Well, while that's doing that, you know, a couple of things you might be asking, well, how often is that, you know, that list updated? So when you're going in and selecting the Microsoft licensure, as you can imagine, there's thousands of different um, uh, licensing uh, that's available through Office 365. So what we do is we get a feed uh, on a monthly basis directly from Microsoft that populates that subscription uh, catalog that Frank went in, he just typed in E1 and he got that, but you could type in anything uh, basically through there. And it's updated on a monthly basis with the latest and greatest Microsoft catalog offerings and service now. So, sorry about that, Frank, but I just wanted to share that with the group. So um, I see That's what you want to so add. Yep, go ahead. Yep, so we saw within three clicks, we were able to provision a license. And let's go just verify that the subscription actually created one for us. So now I had some other ones in here, but you can see now we've activated an Office 365 license. And if we come into it, all the appropriate details, along with you know anything related to like the subscription URIs, all exist within that, within that request. So three clicks, we're able to provision a, a license. Now that's one step in the journey, right? You may also want to say, I need to associate this with a user now. Right. So let's go in and do that real quick. So again, we tried to make it as frictionless and as the least amount of clicks as possible, you know, but you still have to pick what do you want to associate. So we want to assign this user and let's say we want to assign that user to Frank. So again, we're looking at less than three clicks and we've now associated this or we've created the request. Again, same rules apply with all of our, all of our bi-directional. We have a action button and we have workflows tied to it, but I, I'm gonna go ahead and just say approve it. So now our approval request has taken place. Mm. So Next. there's steps that you can run on this, um, you know, that could be one to, to five steps. Um, and we've kind of taken it one step further than, than doing everything manually. So should I walk into that, Chris? Yeah, I think it's, it's really awesome. So first of all, if you wanted to do it manually, you could do that. We've tried to simplify it. And again, if you had available licenses, so, uh, you know, Frank, maybe you could just jump over to that and just show them like, you know, how many available licenses this tenant has, this test tenant uh, has. You could, you, um, you don't have to go out and purchase a license. If you wanted to look and say, oh, okay, great. We have this many licenses available, as we can see here. You know, you can say, you know, how many E1s do we have? Oh, we have 11 of them available uh, and one consumed, as we can see there. Maybe you wouldn't need to go purchase another one. Uh, but again, we showed you how simple and easy it was. If you needed to go purchase it right through ServiceNow, you could do that. So I just wanted to you know, tell the users that you could bypass that step and just assign a license from the pool that you own. But once again, you don't want to own too many that are not being consumed because you're paying for them, right? So you don't want to do that. You want to you know, basically have real-time inventory. Um, yeah, so Frank, so that was really slick. So now how can we make it even faster for the customer? Yeah, so we, you know, with the power of service now and, and the strength of its workflow and flow engine, we can take all of those manual steps and roll them up into even a more simplified way of doing things. So what we have here on the onboarding portion is we want to pick a user. So let's pick my Frank user again. And then we have this notion of software group. And what this is, is for accounting or IT or marketing or sales. And you can define the groups, um, you know, based on your organization. But that basically says, if I'm in accounting, maybe the software that I should get is going to be, you know, some kind of accounting software planner and whatnot. Right, um, maybe the accounting gets like an E3, IT gets a E1, marketing gets a, a business premium license. So basically what these are, Frank, or so you're saying that the user can set up a template basically of you know what by department within the Active Directory, by department we can associate what license each person by department gets. Um, is that, that's basically what we're saying. That's exactly correct. And that's great. Okay, so Frank Hansen's in IT. Yep, so I'm gonna go ahead and click Submit and onboarding process, again, same rules apply. Button will come up or workflow will happen in the background. And now I'm gonna go ahead and onboard the user. So the onboard request happened. Now, we, what we've just simplified, we've taken what is many steps, and I'll just show you the workflow example here, and we've, we've reduced that into just a couple of clicks. 
And this, what Chris was talking about as far as the templates go, you just define what templates are in your organization. And this workflow can easily be extended. So if you have more um, you know, divisions in your company you know, than sales, marketing, and accounting, and IT, it's very easy to add a new definition here. And then the okay. templates are simply the list. Uh, so Frank, I just got to say, so this is the service now, um, you know, template uh, for the workflows. Um, and we, just to let you know, you might, you might be saying, well, can, if some people might need help with workflow design or development, we can, we do that stuff all day, every day, no problem. We can sit with you, coach you through how to create templates, uh, you know, for onboarding. Maybe you want to assign them to groups. We can do all types of things. But Frank, let me just ask you a question. Can we just take a copy or snapshot of this template and then drop it into maybe an existing HR workflow? Could that be done? You can. So we can we can copy this workflow. And let's say your organization uses like a, a parent-child notion as far as workflows go. So we can copy this workflow by just doing a right click on the on the hamburger and then copy. And then we can, you know, name that workflow whatever and bring it into our organization. So maybe you want to change something slightly, or maybe you don't want to use our workflow, but you want maybe part of it. It's very easy to export pieces of the workflow and import into your organization's process. Excellent, excellent. So this workflow right here, what it does is it says, okay, I'm hiring Frank. He's in the IT department. It goes out, checks and sees if we have any of those E1 licenses available. If it didn't have any available, it would go out and then procure the license and then go ahead and assign it to the appropriate group with an active directory and all the other associated things. Is that what would happen? That's correct. And, and this can happen both in, in workflow and in flow if you're using the integration hub, depending on your organization. Hmm. Excellent. Excellent. All right, so let me jump back over here. So, so once you provision your, your Microsoft environment, you know, then we have just a, an enormous amount of data that we're able to capture. And it can be everything from, you know, let's, see, let's find out like what's provisioned for a given user. So we pull back the users. And if I drill into users and let's pick on Frank, and I look at Frank Hansen, I get the you know, pertinent user information, but I also get all the service plans that Frank Hansen is using at the moment. You know, right. So again, depending on what you fill out in your org, you know, you're able to at least capture the assigned service plans. Yep, excellent. Now, in, in addition to that, you know, we capture everything related to the licensing and subscription. So like what Chris was asking before, I wanna see counts of given licenses. Um, I can come in here. And then I want to see if I order Office 365 E1, what does that include? And then I have a list of all of the, the service plans that that includes. And then the counts, you know, total units consumed, available, active, warning, and suspended units. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so I know, um, Drew, is it, we have a couple of questions or something coming in? We did have one just come in, and I think it's, you know, it definitely ties pretty well into what we're talking about here, and especially we talk about onboarding users and, and some of these requests that we can make through this. And the question is asking us about AD on-premise and if we're integrating for that at all as well. Hmm. Okay, so, yeah, so that's great. a great segment. Yeah. Let me just bring up, so I bring up our list of applications. So we have a, a core application, again, a certified app in the application store. And you know, from AD on premise, we took this. You know, we we know ServiceNow had its own way of doing things. We looked at it from you know over 20 plus years of enterprise management experience. What things do we want to do from discovery and from orchestration? So anything related on premise with the computers, and that includes everything like processes and services that are running and utilization of the device to users and groups that are in the environment. You know, so we we feel like on the you know on the collection side, we nailed it. And then to take it a step further, we said, okay, every time we bring in an application, we wanna make sure we have bi-directional within that application. So we've incorporated the whole orchestration process without having to incur the cost of orchestration to you know, bring on users onto on-premise. The biggest request we get is to reset the password or to unlock or disable the user. Um, you know, so we included those tasks you know, in our bi-directional interface. Hmm. That's awesome, Frank. It really is. 
Um, and I know many customers have really come to enjoy that. Um, and we're also seeing that a lot of our customers are utilizing like what you have here in populating some of the, you know, truthfully, some of the CMDB within ServiceNow, right? By grabbing all this data out of Active Directory. And maybe you can just talk a little bit about that and how that helps populate uh, the CMDB. Not only does it help with the onboarding, offboarding, and associating users with groups and all of that stuff uh, and you know, creating a workflow to make that all happen, but from here, like how does it really help with the, you know, what does it do beyond you know, just populating the CMDB? What else do we do with it? Yeah, so that, that's a great segue into this as well. So we discover everything that AD exposes data-wise. And if you look at this example of a computer in our lab, you know, all of the, you know, it, again, depends on what you populated in your, in your environment, but we grab everything from computer information to pertinent login information, you know, everything related to that device. But the bonus is that we also will tell you, here's all the patches and then wow. here's the software installed. Now, we've taken it even one step further and we grab process. Well, some that know about Discover and ServiceNow might be like, well, I see software and processes in theirs. The difference is now that we can tell you the, the CPU and memory consumption of every process that's ever run on that computer. And we're able to keep track of that data. And what really makes that useful is now I can do trending to say, hey, my big fix client or my SCCM client has been using this much CPU and this much memory over, over time. Um, and then if I even want to go one step further, I can look at the network interconnectivity. So I can say, hey, this application communicates on this TCP port and I'm interested in seeing, you know, how long it's been connected. So I really think on, on what we've discovered in the on-premise environment, we've taken it up a notch from what exists in the traditional discovery. Hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely think so. And I know our customers keep asking us for more features in there. Uh, but yeah, that that's you know, really great stuff um, from that perspective. Um, so there is a tremendous amount that we can do with the Active Directory, uh, you know, from users and groups and org units. And we can do all of that. We can create workflows within here. Uh, and again, communicating back over uh, and working with Office 365. Uh, and again, we can help you develop all types of workflows in, in this bi-directional fashion and correlating you know all this different type of data from the different application connectivities that we have um, that, that's that's fantastic um, Frank while we're here looking at some others why, why don't we just jump in and show a, a couple other things that eBridge can do in regards to let's look at maybe a uh, big fix because I know we were talking about and I know how mundane uh, patching and stuff is and you know how to be able to you know take big fix or or other types of uh, you know patching solutions and you know show us what we've developed here it would be great. Sure, sure. So there's a couple things that should jump out at the ServiceNow folks that are administrators is you know this whole with big fix you know and with SCCM you know it's all about patching and keeping the environment you know compliant. Well, not only do we, you know, mine the data for discovery from Big Fix and other applications, we also mean or ensure that we have prescribed to the completeness, the compliance, and the correctness of the CMDB itself. And while we do that, as soon as we go out of compliance, we have bidirectional interface into Big Fix. So let's say, for example, we're out of compliance and we need to create a baseline. You know, one of the things in Big Fix, because I'm a Big Fix guy from way back, that is complicated is doing dynamic baselines. Well, we provide a nice interface in ServiceNow to perform dynamic baselining of data. So it's real simple, come in here, put some names in some sites, grab a, a location or I mean a, a group, and then pick the patches that you want to add to a baseline. And this interface with our Big Fix um, application will then go and create the baseline in Big Fix instance, and then you can, uh, you can you know, from a workflow or from an, a UI button, you can actually run the baseline. Um, so those are some really big things that customers have asked for. There's a ton of other little things in here that are big fix relevant, you know, for those that know the product, you know, being able to update computer settings, run tasks, install clients. You know, these are just some of the things that in every application, you know, we wanna make sure we're doing the things that, you know, the product does really well. And we're trying to offload the day-to-day -day or mundane you know, activities within that application. You know, big fix is one, QRadar or you know, SCCM is another. I'll jump to QRadar for a second and just kind of show you, 
you know, we bring in all the relevant data from offenses, events, and vulnerabilities from QRadar. Because you might ask, hey, QRadar is in the app store within the service now. Well, if you look, they do one thing. They bring in offense data into a ticket, and that's it. We've taken that way beyond just creating a ticket, and we bring in all the asset data from QRadar. And with a single switch, you can turn it on or off, and assets can go into the CMDB. We have all the offense data that comes across, as well as vulnerabilities. And now, in addition can to I that, ask you a question. Yeah, yeah, sure. please go ahead. So, so it's kind of cool because if you go back to the big fix one, I noticed you had a task in there to install an agent. So to me, this goes back to correlation and again, being a big fix person, um, a lot of times, you know, working with a customer or a client they're, Hey, did we get all the agents deployed? And my answer usually is you need to tell me, I, I don't know your environment. Um, but if you're getting something from core and you're doing network based scanning, you're also pulling in active directory information um, and you know where the big fix agent is installed. This goes back to that whole correlation pieces you could probably tell which devices are out there that eBridge is seeing from whatever other source that doesn't have a big fix agent and then kick off a task to go get that installed is that correct that is correct and what's nice is as we grab the process the process data comes in but let's say you you know let's use your big fix example if I hit the big fix client here now I know every computer that has it installed and not only do I know that it was installed I know which ones it's running hot on so I can see here the CPU you know, or memory that that particular big fix process is running on. Huh. Very cool. Frank, uh, I know that another question that came in was, do you, can you talk a little bit about, do you touch the CMD tables or how, how do we populate the CMDB uh, tables? Some a question came in asking that. Uh, can you maybe yeah. explain a little bit about, you know, do we actually touch those or what, what how, do you, how do we do that? Or do we allow the customer to choose? If you could please explain that. Yep, so that's a great question. So, you know, on the, from the CMDB perspective, as you bring in any data into ServiceNow, um, you know, you really want it to prescribe to the CMDB. Now, we've given the user the option to say, hey, if you don't want us to touch your CMDB data and you want to create this, you know, big fixed data model by itself, it's a simple switch. They turn it on or off and it will allow you to bring data in or not into the CMDB. So we give you the option. Excellent, excellent. Because I know people are very concerned, you know, uh, about that, and uh, you know, so it, it's just important. And the other thing we call it, we call it a bridge, because the reality of it is, you could drop eBridge in, and let's say for some reason you don't want it anymore, you could pull the eBridge right out, and the, you know, the two sides of the the water, if you would, would remain the constant. It's we're just removing the bridge, so it's we're really not it's, affecting. The CMD. It's also. A Important to note there too, though, just if you don't write directly to the CMDB table, um, you're creating links so that if you're clicking on something inside of there, Frank, you'll still be able to see that extended data, right? Right from right from the one view. Um, you know, if you're not writing directly to the CMDB, so you're not losing any functionality per se, correct? Yeah, yeah. So if they if the customer decides they don't want to up, you know, integrate into the CMDB and they want to keep they want big fix or they want SCCM data. Um, but they don't want to tie into the CMDB, then with that switch on, you still have full access to that data in ServiceNow. It just doesn't adhere to the, the overall compliance, correctness, and completeness that the CMDB is charged with in ServiceNow. Hmm. And I just think that's important to note, right? Because we don't want custom people to think on the line, hey, if you don't integrate it in the CMDB, you can't have one place to look for all your data. You absolutely still do, right? Yep, that's correct. Um, you know, Frank, I, we have, I can interrupt real quick. We had a question come in about the dashboards and if those are a default dashboard out of the box. Um, one, one piece I would, I would add to that would be, you know, you've seen Frank flipping in between the different integrations here. And really what you can do, even if with one, two, three integrations, whatever you decide to do, you could have one all-encompassing eBridge dashboard with really the most important data and reports, you know, most critical to your business. And then, uh, you know, in addition, you know, whether, you know, signing up for, you know, POC or a trial or whether we go to deploy, that's one of the things that we offer is, is when you do sign up for that, we'll actually put that dashboard together that fits your business case, you know, best with the data you want to look at. So if you want to consolidate it all in one piece, have it separated out, even, you know, we do some, you know, like an operator and an executive level dashboard, things like that, where we can, we can really configure it to exactly to what your business need is. 
Yeah, it's a really good point. And uh, the other thing too, I think you know, along the same lines as a dashboard is if there's like, you know, some workflows that need to be adjusted, you know, we work with you to make sure that those are, you know, uh, appropriate for your organization. Uh, Frank, I've seen another question that came in here. Is eBridge a substitute for the mid server uh, that is provided in service now? Yeah, so e eBridge, you know, the mid server is the conduit into the on-premise environment. Um, from ServiceNow and what that allows you to do. So if you have an on-premise AD or on-premise SCCM or on-premise Big Fix, that mid-server is required because that gives you the conduit, the secure conduit into the on-premise environment. So it's not a replacement, um, you know, and we, we like to do things through the mid-server because instead of from on-premise going to This provides us with typically, you know, a one-way interface method in how you interface with ServiceNow. Hmm. Okay. Awesome. Um, I got a couple of questions that I know are often asked. Um, is the how do I mean we've had customers ask this, right? How do we perform application debugging if something's not working properly? Let's say in between the connectivity between Office 365 and uh, and, and uh, big, I mean, and ServiceNow. How, and what does eBridge use, you know, um, to, to help with that? Yeah, so we've incorporated in all of our applications, and I'll, I'll, I, I promise I'll only go into the woods for a second, is we tie in a really robust set of logging. So if you come in into the logging and you're running a job, you can come in and just type in eBridge up in the message and just have it filter. So if you look at the, you know, in the example where we did the office provisioning, we walk you through every step. It's starting the action. The subscription is starting. Here's the REST service call to go off and do things. And you'll notice I can debug and walk through every single thing that is required. And down to here's the entitlements that were looked at. So we're, we have very robust logging built in. And, and that's you know, set so that the user can you know, go in. And if you have an issue in connectivity, that'll provide you the, you know, the method to find out what's going on. But let me add to that, though, that you know, the onboarding process of eBridge in your environment, you know, we're going to hold your hand and make sure that, you know, it's successful. We'll make sure that, you know, when you bring in one of our, you know, products from eBridge that start to finish, you're up and going, you know, in a very short period of time and that, you know, the connectivity is rock solid. Yeah, that's a really important. This is not a month's uh, engagement. This, this is days, uh, if that. Um, you know, you, you're going to be seeing, uh, you know, realizing value quickly. If you wanted to automate your Office 365 employee onboarding with full provisioning and assignment, yeah, we, that's, it's up and running really, really, really quickly. It's not something that's going to take a long time to see value. Um, a couple of other questions. Do, do you keep logs of all the transactions? If so, where do they logs reside? Yep, yeah, so, so we have the auditing turned on within ServiceNow and the, the audit logs are going to remain in ServiceNow. Um, so, you know, you're not going to lose anything. It's not like it'll be like on a log server in your on-premise environment. It's going to be stored in the cloud and, you know, you have to have admin rights to be able to see anything with it. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um, can eBridge map the application being used down to the endpoint uh, server level? Can eBridge map the, the app application used? The applications being used. Um, I guess it's more of a discovery. Oh, sure, sure, sure. So I think I know what they're asking. So, so let's use the example of AD on premise for that. And let's say we want to categorize the type of computer. Um, you know, so for example, we have all this computer information. And we can tell you the type. So, like, let's say you have a database, you know, or you're, let's say you're from an installed software perspective, you know, you're running monitoring software. We could classify the type of device based on, you know, the, the applications that have been installed. Now, that's always open to interpretation, right? Because, you know, you might have a database installed on a workstation while you're testing, right? So, if you classify that as a database server, that might not always be correct. So there's a little bit of, of ambiguity in that, but you know, for the most part, we have all the data, so it's very easy for us to track it to the at the endpoint level. Okay. And then the last one I see is, does eBridge replace the CI class manager for deduplication? Um, yes. As a matter of fact, we we don't replace it, but we adhere to it. So we ensure that any data that comes into the CMDB 
prescribes to that hierarchy within the class definition. Now, if your organization creates your own class or data models, um, we'd have to obviously do a little bit of adjusting to adhere to that. But the out-of-the-box service now hierarchy, we, we adhere to that. And then based on what you define as your policy, so a good example is, you know, completeness. So there might be, when you do a discover of a computer, there might be 20 fields you got to find. And if you only find 18, you know, you're not considered complete and compliant. We ensure that all the data that comes in from our applications is complete, compliant, and correct. Excellent, excellent. Drew, I don't see any more. Do you have any more questions, Drew, that you're getting? We had, one more. We had another one come through here asking, uh, are we working on any other Microsoft integrations? So you may have saw as we were flipping through there, um, SCCM, uh, which is another one, SCOM is another one in there. I know we have Azure tagged in there. And so with the SCCM piece, we're gonna be looking at, you know, as Frank was showing a lot of features in Big Fix, um, you know, we're gonna, you know, mimic some of that functionality and, and probably even go a little bit beyond that. So you can see we have some data right here that we're pulling in from SCCM. And this is one of our, uh, this is one of ours that are, that's in flight right now um, in development. So, and do, I would just say this is uh, for those who say, look, you know, we want, you know, I'm looking for this, I'm looking for this. What I would suggest to you is bring it up to us uh, because that's basically how we're building them is based basically based upon customer requests of, you know, what we're building. Um, so if there is a particular Microsoft application, or for that matter, just about any application, uh, you know, bring it to our attention and let us know. And you know, we the, the thing that I'm really proud of of Frank and his team is they've developed this programming pattern that allows us to create these application girders or these application connectivities in a relatively short period of time. Um, and so. Again, if there's an application that you're looking for that's not part of, uh, you know, our existing uh, application connectivity, uh, it, no problem. <laughs> it, it, we're going to build it. It's, we just try. There's so many applications. Where do we start? So we started with the ones that our customers asked us for the most, uh, and that's where we are. But now we're knocking them down as people are suggesting them. So please keep the suggestions coming. Um, okay, okay, well, if, Drew, do you have any more questions coming in on your side? That's it from the group. All right, well, that was 45 minutes. We try to keep it short and sweet. Um, so let's just talk about, you know, next steps. Uh, you know, we can go ahead and, you know, we can put these out and we can connect uh, through a proof of concept, a trial. We can drop an eBridge into your environment and show you how we can take some of the disparate um, you know, applications that you have and connect them into your ServiceNow environment uh, so you can see for yourself um, exactly you know, how it works within your environment. Um, and you know, we would love to you know, do a little bit more of a deeper dive if you wanted to bring in some people from the business side. Uh, we've had several customers you know, say, okay, I wanna to talk to you about developing a workflow with HR uh, you know, about going out and provisioning the Office 365 licensing, uh, assigning them to certain, uh, you know, work groups, uh, assigning them to dis different uh, distribution groups, shared mailboxes. Uh, we, we've gone into different Office 365 teams that they should be part of, um, et cetera. Um, so we have all of that built out and we just, you know, again, we're just setting up the workflow, working with you and make that happen uh, in, in a short period of time. And again, we are very cognizant uh, that we have to be price competitive in here and we, we are make sure that we're not going to break the bank uh, on, uh, on these integrations. Um, so uh, that's our site. If you want to take a look at it, championsg.com slash eBridge. Uh, you know, got a lot of great video out there, a lot of good white papers, a lot of good use cases. Um, and um, we'll be also reaching out to the, some of you who are on the, the, um, uh, the, the meeting today uh, to schedule some follow-ups. Um, what can I say, Frank? Thank you. Uh, uh, great job today, Drew. Always a pleasure. Um, and Dan, I heard Dan chime in and uh, awesome. So uh, great. I wish everybody a, a great week and health and happiness. Thank you all very much. Have a great day, everybody.